Hey you folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play for Stellaris! And it really is going to feel incredibly brand new, because this is version 2.0, the Sherry or Cherry patch over here, which completely transforms how Stellaris plays. In addition to that, we are playing with the Apocalypse DLC, which adds huge doom ships that blow up planets, so that should be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, I haven't played... Stellaris and Ages, and I haven't really played 2.0 here. I've been trying to follow up on the Dev Diaries and trying to watch the Paradox streams, which have been fantastic, but there's going to be a lot of learning as we go here, which I'm excited for. Now, despite the fact that everything here is new, I'm actually going to something old in this particular game with the Serene Cat Empire. The Serene Cat Empire is one of the very first empires I made in Stellaris. I think it might have been our very first Let's Play. And I decided to bring back the idea of these cute little critters because there's some new stuff added here that I think will be an excellent, excellent combination with the theme. The idea here is we have cats and they are decadent. They need they need people around to give them belly rubs and clean their litter box. They need to have own pops around, otherwise they are going to be unhappy. So there's our negative modifier right over here. And the reason I grabbed that, again, oh wait, again, that was our cat theme, but it's this barbaric despoilers trait for our, um, for our government that made me want to play these guys again. The barbaric despoilers, so they can't do quite a few of the diplomatic relationships, right? No defensive pacts, migration treaties, etc, etc. But they have a permanent CB with their neighbors to go raiding. Well, I guess you can raid even in normal war, but you have a new raiding bombardment stance, which allows us to go and abduct pops from besieged planets and resettle them on our world. So we can get some extra slaves. I mean, belly rubbers this way. We've got our slaver guilds over here for more food and mineral production from slaves. We are fanatic authoritarians, so we get more influence than normal and even more slave resource production. And we're militarists because that makes a heck and lots of sense, I was going to say. Uh, can use the no retreat war doctrine. Interesting. Better army damage, better fire rate. These are pretty strong. We went with slow breeders over here mostly because, hey, if I'm going to be capturing a bunch of slaves, I don't need to breed quite as quickly, so that's going to be okay. Went with communal here because I figure we, we're going to be playing in a savannah world because I wanted, um, I was like, well, we don't want it to be cold. We don't want it to be wet. Savannah makes sense. And if we, uh, maybe we descended from more lions, right? They say lions are the king of the jungle, but they live in the savannah and they live in pride. So it's like communal makes sense and happiness is always good. We are going to be intelligence because cats are brilliant. And certainly we're not taking anything that has anything to do with manual labor because that would be, <laughs> we're not going to do any of that. And uh, I threw in traditional just because I like unity output more, more than it fitting any particular kind of story. We are imperial because we're the serene cat empire. I did go with the, uh, the humanoid ships because they look awesome. Love that. I uh, haven't actually played with the humanoid pack yet, so I'm really pumped about seeing that. Um... And that's basically it. That's what we're going to talk about. We've got the Roman naming theme that we're going to see. And, uh, yeah, we don't choose starting weapons, and we certainly don't choose FTL, because we are now going to be in, um, in, in 2.0. Hyperspace lanes are the only way to go at the start. And actually, I had really started playing hyperspace lane only as my travel source for my Stellaris games. It turned out to be a lot more fun. And I'm really looking forward to the um, to the new mechanics here that make the hyperlanes even more interesting in terms of how you claim systems, the way war works, where you can really truly use choke points. So it's a lot less sort of chasing people and doing whack-a-mole things because they have to go and take one system at a time. They can't just skip things. I think it's going to be excellent. So I've reset the settings to default over here. Um... Medium, I think, is actually pretty fair for our first game. I don't know. Should we just go crazy? Large? I mean, I don't think we're going to be huge. Let's go large. Let's bump up our neighbors just a scooch over here. Something like that. Um, so instead of 12, we'll have 14 AI empires. We'll leave the advanced starts on. Sure. Fallen empires on. Sure. Marauder empires. Yeah, that sounds fine. Baseline price or anything. We could throw in more primitives because that could be more possible slaves for us. Actually, I like finding primitives. There we go. We're going to go up a little higher on that. That's going to be fine. Uh, crisis strength defaults to 1.25? Maybe it has to do with the galaxy size, I bet. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, everything else is good. Alright, let's do this. 
Bum, bum, bum. I, I do apologize if my voice is a little scratchy. I do not feel super well today. I'm not going to let that stop me from playing freaking Stellaris, because freaking Stellaris is awesome, and especially freaking Patch 2.0. But, uh, yeah, if my voice is a little scratchy, that's why. In the eons! Since the first primitive Gilbertan, communities took shape on the great savannas of Kenjor Prime. Our civilization has spread and prospered. It is the ancient right of the strong to dominate the weak, and our society was built around this premise. You cannot protect what is yours. Or, if you cannot protect what is yours, then it belongs to whomever can take it. In this way, the strongest and most clever of us rose to power while the rest were forced in line. Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane Network, the finest minds of the Streamcap Empire finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasps. Excellent. So let us begin. Oh! No, let us not begin. I did not want to go with the standard galaxy shape. My bad. Back to the menu. I want spirals. I want um, something like the galaxy shape. Spiral two arms? Yeah. I want something like that because I think it leads to slightly more interesting sort of choke points and territory. I think it's going to give the... the, the things see it's a little bit more flavor look because there's these big gaps in connectivity between some of the spiral sections Oops, sorry i forgot to mute gmail my bad there for anyone who just had to check their computer this start might not be so great because we are sort of pushed into a corner over here on the other hand you know we only have to defend from one angle so that's going to be okay we'll go with it let's take a look at kenjor kenjor is the one thing i didn't rename um over here it was just running with random names but i kind of liked it so Interestingly enough, in 2.0, you do start with your home system fully explored, and some of it, I don't know, in this, in this case, half of it, uh, is already improved with little mining bases and whatnot. So you get, I guess, maybe a little bit of a faster kickstart over here, which is kind of cool. The other big thing is every system that you claim has to have a, um, where is it? Oh, over here has to have some sort of station around it. Sorry, there's like so, tons of stuff around the sun. Um, so every star system you own has a station. By default, you can build outposts. There's no limit on number of outposts you can build. You can also upgrade them to proper star bases. Um, and you do have a star base capacity limit. There's also more further upgrade versions of the star base. There's no, it doesn't hit any harder against your limit as far as I know. They're just bigger and stronger and have more slots. Um, and this is the real meat and potatoes of what supports the changes to hyperspace and all kinds of other technology in 2.0. It's the station mechanic, which is quite wonderful. Now, um, these, these stations around the sun are also where you build military ships. And this took me a little bit of derping around, just like practicing with the UI here in a little little test start that I had going on, just just to click on things and see where they are. Um, your station can only build military ships, and your planet's spaceport can only build civilian ships. For a while there, I was like, I was clicking here, I'm like, what do I need? Do I need to unlock the tech for for for, for colony ships? Like, how do I get colony ships? I don't understand. But yeah, that's it. So your stations with shipyards, and this one has a shipyard component is where you build military ships from and your planets don't have that potential um but that's okay so we also start with the crew quarters over here which means that any ships that are docked in orbit around the uh the station here 20 percent or 25 percent less upkeep so they're a little cheaper we've got a slot for a module here we could add a second shipyard which i think means you'd build two ships at the same time I haven't really tested this. We've got the Anchorage to give us more naval capacity. Now, naval capacity has sort of been split into two kind of things. This is still the total number of ships you can have. So we're at three of 20 in total before we start getting whacked with, like, really hard maintenance. But in addition to that, each one of your fleets has a maximum size. Now, they also start at 20, but that's kind of just a coincidence. Um, your naval capacity will go up, grow quite a lot faster than your fleet capacity. So now you don't just have a single doom fleet because there is kind of a maximum fleet size going around here. Uh, the nice thing too is there's this new fleet management aspect that we'll look at later, but using this means you really don't actually have to manually queue up ships at your stations. In fact, you often won't want to. Now, I'm very tempted to actually just start with a trading hub here for the four energy credits because money is pretty important early on, but let's see what we're going to do with our minerals first. Actually, yeah, let's take a look at our planet now. So Kenjor Prime, we are a savanna planet of size 16 over here we've got our governor over here giving us a few bonuses it's our capital so we've got our ethics attraction that's fine 100 habitability standard stuff 
Um, now, we are running the caste system government. Now, I don't remember if this was in, like, at the start. Like, when was this introduced? Has it always been here? But the caste system is interesting. So you can see um, right over here, citizenship, caste system over here. Any one of our pops that gets assigned to working food or minerals is a slave. All the other pops are not a slave, um, which is kind of interesting. I don't, I didn't remember that being a thing, but I don't know. Maybe I never played the right kind of governments to unlock that. So yeah, now it does mean we've got quite a few slaves to start off with, uh, which means the non-slaves are fairly happy, but hopefully we can get some non-cat slaves to, to replace these jobs later on. Um, just to, you know, it feels like our cats should have top priority over that kind of thing, but there's definitely a cat system, or cast system here, a cat system. Yes, indeed. Uh, we might start by clearing this blocker here for energy. Or, you know what? How about the mineral one? And this only costs energy to remove the blockers, so I feel pretty secure doing that. There's our 100 energy, and that's okay. We're going to start clearing that one out, and that might be where we want to start growing our next population, and I'm okay with that. So, our construction ship over here, we are going to get you... I'm just trying to eyeball the... Do we have a source of minerals that isn't hooked up? We do. Oh, over here. So I want you to start by building a mining station for more minerals. That's going to be fine. And does that leave us enough for another science ship right away? It does. I want a second science ship right away. Very pleased with that. Okay. Physics research. We're going to go for administrative AI for the 5% boost. That seems pretty straightforward. Planetary unification for the flat unity is really good. We can unlock the heritage site, which also produces unity, but we have to build it and it's got upkeep. Yeah, let's get this. It also gives us additional edicts that we can run campaigns. We're going to look at that. Uh, I really like the rebalance they've done to make influence and uh, energy credits a lot more kind of balanced with each other. Very pleased with that. We've got a spark of genius over here, which is lovely. These, uh, these Corvette techs are interesting. They've changed a few things. Like, there's no longer that Corvette building add-on to star bases, for example, which were always really awkward, the order that they came in and the fact that they used up a slot. They were kind of wonky. I think it's great that they decided, you know what, we're just going to throw that out and replace it with these techs. Um, now, this just builds speed. I don't know if I really particularly care about speed. Um, I don't need the engineering facilities this early because we probably don't have the money to support it and we probably have other things we need to do with our minerals. We could just pick up afterburners just for like a little bit of um, improvement to our ships, actually. It's not the worst thing. You know, maybe we'll start with this because we don't need the build speed. So we can do that and do some upgrades. Now, one of the things we'd normally do is we'd send out our fleet to go and explore these stars, but we can't. We need science ships to first explore a star because presumably the others don't have the right sensors. They'll come in, they'll, they'll warp into an asteroid field, and, you know, we all know the odds of surviving that are pretty bad. So our science guy here, do I want to start with the back? No, I guess we'll, we'll press out forward first, and that's going to be okay. So I'm going to get you to come out over here, say, and survey that system. I mean, you can just move into it, which would explore it, but you may as well go and survey while you're there. And you know what? I'll go ahead and just queue up a chain of surveys like that. Okay, let's go to fastest speed for now. So we've got the tile blocker. We're building the ship. We've got a new air. Right, so our warlord Gilbert over here, investor, bonus energy credits, expansionist, complete. cheaper outposts, actually. I'm fairly pleased with that. Spaceport has finished. We're going to get a new science ship. Now, um, I actually kind of checkmated myself a little bit because I won't be able to lose my science ship right away because it costs energy to hire a scientist. I guess um, I might have not wanted to spend it. I mean, I still would be a little short. I'm actually wondering if I go and steal one of my actual scientists off this. For example... Maybe I shuffle them around. I was going to say, we don't necessarily need to rush the afterburners. So, that's, I am going to steal one of my scientists. Um, you're commanding the ship. I won't leave the spark of brilliance. So, let's say I grab just you and do that. And then I'm going to take this guy over here. So, I'm going to delay the research on our engineering for a bit in exchange for having a slightly faster science ship. I... I I don't, I don't know if that's entirely ideal, but it's what we're doing. So we're going to go and explore our backside over here. We're hoping to find some Savannah planets. What do we have over here? Savannah world size 17. Excellent. You have no scientists. I know it's pretty bad. Just need 200 money again. And it's construction of a mining station. I'm going to get you to, there we go, build another mining station. Get us a bit more energy here. 
Continental World. Size 25 Continental World. Now, I think we only have 20% habitability there because I think it's one step wetter and one step colder. So if it was jungle, I think we'd be sort of okay. But Continental's pretty bad for us. We're going to have to go and get ourselves some Continental-type belly scratcher people. Ooh, alien life. So, yeah, we found some just like... Some little critters, some little mice or something on the, one of these worlds here. Alien organisms. Not intelligent life yet, but life nonetheless. Life uh, finds a way. I don't know if I want to hook up the science here quite yet. Obviously, science is really good, but I'm kind of concerned about just early economy. And obviously, we're going to want to settle here right away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my science ship. These borders do not grow on their own. The borders are only around planet or around suns you've actually claimed. There's no more automatic border growth. The only way for your borders to grow and, you know, claim new systems is for you to go and send out a constructor ship to build new outposts. So I'm going to send my constructor ship over here. We will build an outpost when we get a few more minerals. We will claim this system. That way we'll be in a good position to settle it. You got to claim it before you settle it. You can't settle things outside your borders. Um, artifacts, ancient civilization. Oh, precursor, the Voltum event the chain. Look updated. All right. I don't know if I've ever done the Voltum event anomaly chain. Found. We've got a, um, an anomaly here. I think I'd like to wait until you level up a little bit more so we can drop the failure risk a bit. So we're going to leave it for now. It's going to be fine. Intelligent life taunts with pointed absence, reads a popular Newsnet post on Kenjor Prime. The people of the Serene Cat Empire are apparently finding some humor in the fact that lower forms of alien life are now a matter of public record, but potential equals from other stars continue to elude us. I'm sure it's going to happen. You need to chill out. Science officer, whatever's report on the traces found on BT-845, seemingly only add an ironic t twist to the situation. Oh, the, the remnants, yeah. So I did take the, the Roman name thing uh, from, I think, the human pack, the humanoids pack, because I thought that was very fitting and very fun. So you're fully explored. The science ship, or the construction ship has arrived here. Oh, no, you're not. This is fully explored. This one is not yet. I guess there's a lot more stuff going on in this system. Can't be too far out. We were very close to having enough energy credits to get ourselves another scientist again. Star system charted. There you go. Now you're fully charted, so go ahead and build us a mining outpost, or, or um, a starbase outpost over here. So again, the outposts don't count against your limits. You can build as many outposts as you have minerals and um, influence for. Now, influence is a lot easier to come by now, I've found. Um, because... There's, you know, you don't need it for things like scientists, for example. So there's a little bit more options there, which is quite cool. We're going to be helped by the fact that we are um, authoritarian. So, no. Is it the authoritarian that gives us the... Yeah, monthly influence, like that. So we should have a good amount to play around with, which is going to be lovely. Uh, we're going to wait for, what, like 300 and change minerals so that we can settle this planet. No traits going on. Good amount of minerals early, which is good. A little bit of food to feed itself. Excellent. All right. Hopefully, we can find at least one good science planet. But early on, it's nice to get the uh, the production the production boost uh, wherever possible. So I'm actually going to want you to go here when you when you grow, so you can be a miner. One of the, my favorite things about 2.0 is it'll actually be little symbols next to things when there's stuff you can do. For example, we've been reminded here the starbase has an unused module slot available. And getting oh, there's our 200 money. Uh, getting more money would be good. Do we want to spend this? Or do we want to save it for the early colony ship? I think we're going to save it for the early colony ship. But what I am going to do now is recruit a new scientist. <clears throat> Resilient's pretty good because you can get the XP higher level. You know what? We'll just get a resilient guy over here. That's going to be fine. Okay, so we've got a scientist once again to complete our research, which is going to be swell. Uh, our, one of our scientists did gain a level as well. Okay. All right, construction ship is still idle. So, hmm. Again, I could use the minerals to upgrade the starbase for more money. It is quite a bit, actually. You spend 100 minerals to get four energy, which is quite a bit more energy than these things. That being said, I'm going to start <clears throat> by building the mining station for the minerals here. That's going to be the first priority. But I think when I get to 100, I think I will go and build that trade station. I think it's going to be very useful early on. They're not permanent. You can't always replace them if you decide that you're unhappy with your choice. This is going to be a decent system for us to um, to just work with the various little um, mining operations and whatnot. Oh, let's go back to fastest. So we're capped on food, so we're getting bonus growth, which is good because we actually have a growth penalty normally. Targon over here. 
energy around the sun. Um, I don't think if there's resources around the sun, you still have to build a mining outpost um, in, in 2.0, whereas usually in, in previous one, the frontier outpost would automatically claim whatever was around the sun. Star system charted. And so I was going to go here and go here and spend 100 to get the energy credits. I think that's going to be good. We've got our first traditions available over here. Uh, I think early on, the, the question is always expansion versus discovery. And I think we are going to start with expansion over here. Go down that route. That's going to be okay. And yeah, we're going to try to colonize this when we can. Um, I think the construction ship might just sit idle for a bit here. Because we can't build anything around Tua. Because I think as soon as we colonize it, that becomes moot. So, and we don't need the energy so bad. Yeah, I think it's going to sit idle. We're just going to crew enough minerals to be able to settle this as early as possible. I think that's going to be very important for us. So, we're still checking the back over here. Uh, the scientists have hit level 2, so we could do the anomaly. I think as soon as one of these guys becomes idle, we'll do the anomaly at that point. That's going to be fine. Construction. 200 minerals. Complete. Finish your construction queue so we get a few more uh, energy coming in. And yeah, we will be notified if someone is working a tile without anything. That being said, this guy's almost there, and I think it's worth starting the, the mining network now. Yeah, we use a little bit of minerals, shot. delay our colonization a bit, but for minerals it's okay. Level 3 anomaly, we're going to leave that for now. Habitable Worlds uh, initiative, yes, we will say yes, Situation because we get a nice reward for that. Um, you get a bunch of society research, I think, which is going to be grand. Actually, I actually have a bonus to physics research already. And how's that coming along? 5%. That's going to be good and lovely. The edicts, this will be a little further behind because it took us a while to get started. And that guy will also have a little bit of XP, which is fine. Arctic world over here. So these are not really our planets back here at all. Hopefully we can find another savannah world out Star here. Feels, I don't know, for some reason it feels comfortable hitting sort of like three. I don't know why. Um, is this... Change scientists. Because, yeah, you're actively surveying, you're not, so. Although you're further away. You know what, we'll wait for the other guy to finish. Go ahead and survey here and here. Now, you can claim systems that aren't directly adjacent to your own, but it does take more uh, influence to do that. And ultimately, you're going to want to claim the whole chain, so. Stop. Unless you're Stop. rushing to something specific, it's not really important. There you go. So you're going to go and research that one. You could, if we waited till he was level 3, I think we could get it down to a 5% failure risk, but we'll take the 10%. Especially, researching anomalies is actually a fairly good way to get experience as well, so it's alright. I know it's twice as much risk of failure as, as the alternative, but the research boost will be nice. One of the things that's nice is you do get the tech that gives you the um, map the stars initiative um, and the automated re uh, automated uh, surveying and stuff quite a bit earlier than before. The early game, like, starting with the... Um, oh, shoot. I'm talking too much and missing the fact that I could be colonizing already. Come on. Okay. We're going to go and we're going to colonize on one of the energy spots over here because the central building gives us energy, so that's going to be okay. I think at the highest levels, it still gives you a little bit of minerals as well, so dropping on a mineral slot isn't the worst. Um... So you got that, you got that. We are going to go ahead and, um, I don't know, I guess I'll build a station over here. Because we are going to want to continuously sort of explore outwards. And I'm going to prioritize setting up the mining stations. What is this? Savannah World! Yes! Yes. Okay, hold on. Um, that is going to change things. You are going to halt. You are instead going to claim this system, and then we'll claim the Bicol system. Plus three engineering. Excellent. We can get a lot of tech over there. And some minerals and things, so that'll be a good one for us to claim. Research speed boost, good. Um, fusion reactors, the way reactors work has changed a fair bit. Uh, and we'll look at that. I think... Am I going to grab the shield tech first, though? Yeah, if we take a look over here at our ships, and I may not bother um, designing them for a little bit, uh, because the energy is now in a utility slot over here, your reactor, which I think is actually... I, I'm a big fan of that. It was, first of all, it's a little tedious to sort of balance that out. It also makes sense that a reactor might be like a centralized part of the ship, just like engines. Like, they didn't let you add multiple engines, so multiple reactors, does that make sense? Now, there are going to be, there's this reactor boost module over here. You can add it in the A Stop. slot to give you more energy if, for some reason, your um, your actual component tech is outstripping your reactor tech. Level 2 anomaly, we're going to leave that be for now. We've got that, we've got that. I've got a little bit of energy, or a little bit of minerals. Um, 
We got some money as well. I think what I'll do is go ahead and remove a couple more tile blockers from over here just to make sure that's going on. Uh, the science ships are done. So you're going to go over here and you're done over there. Why don't you go and check out this space this way? And actually, we can check this entire little side branch and call it done. So with all my minerals, I could build some more ships. I'm not going to get another science ship. Um, I don't know if I want to start building military ships right now. The way the piracy uh, works has changed as well. Um, I think we want to go this way. So we get a little extra unity, and then our new colonies start with one pop. I don't I think we'll have that in time for this world, but maybe the next one. It'll be a nice little boost, and that's going to be okay. Complete. Construction complete. Yeah, I think a lot of the minerals are still just going to go to, like, building this stuff up. Let's go and claim Bacol right away so we can start another colony ship since we do have the money for it. Uh, why don't I actually go and just get it built here? That way it'll be built a little sooner. It'll be ready to go. We've got some tech over here. Monthly unity boost. More edicts. We'll be looking at those in a second because they're so much better than before. Uh, slave processing facility is fantastic. Fairly expensive on the upkeep, but two food, two production, boosts all of our slave production, and dramatically cuts down on slave unrest. I think we're going to need that nice and early. Uh, we did find another anomaly. Oh, it's only level one, so go ahead and research that. See what we can get out of it. Okay, well, on that cheery note, I think we're going to go and put a cut in here. What I should double check is, um, how close are we? 11 months. I could delay 11 months before dropping the ship onto this planet for the plus one pop. We do have lower growth, but I think that's needless. I think it's better to just all on it right away. And actually, it's going to take a while to establish the colony. And I don't know when the plus one pop kicks in. We might be able to time it fine anyway. I don't know. But that's it for our first video. We've got our empire over there. Somewhere out there, there are some belly-scratching sla slaves ready to uh, join our glorious Serene Cat Empire. Thanks for watching. And if it's your first time watching the channel, hey, do make sure to subscribe. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.